Hi, good evening, and thank you for attending our final session in the series of talks around college admissions and applications. What I wanted to do today in the final one is talk about what comes after college and some of the differences I've seen growing up in America versus uh, some of the students and my friends who are, are more influenced by the, uh, their traditional uh, Chinese parents or they came much later uh, in their life uh, to America. And so the outlook, how they approach their career and decisions and success is very different and I find it very interesting. So I wanted to share that uh, with our community here. Growing up in America, we often hear about the American dream where a child grows up in a poor family, but gets a good education, works hard, and becomes very successful. Maybe a millionaire. Many Chinese families come to the US for this American dream. And it's not just Chinese. Before it was the Jewish, before it was the Irish, and even at the start of the country, it was the British. But for Chinese families, their approach generally focuses on different areas compared to the traditional American family today. And so their results are often different. I would like to spend some time sharing two important observations on the differences that I have seen as someone born in China, but raised in the US since I was four. So mostly influenced by American culture. The first observation that I want to talk about is differences I see in the importance of taking risk. Within technology, if you look at some of the most successful people in the US recently, Bill Gates, Mark Zuckerberg, Steve Jobs. None of them actually finish college. It doesn't mean that they're not smart. They're probably some of the most brilliant people in the world. But they are examples where an Ivy League education was not required to be incredibly successful. And that's however you measure success financially, impact on the world, technology produced and discovered. On the other hand, there are examples of people such as Larry Page and Sergey Brin of Google, or David Philo and Jerry Yang of Yahoo, who did go to a top university. And for them, while Stanford helped, I don't believe that it was required for their success. Instead, what I find most valuable about the US and in Silicon Valley in particular is the culture of pursuing your passion and being willing to take risk. All the people above took tremendous risk to achieve their success. They dropped out of Harvard, for example, which would have guaranteed a life of a great job and high income. They turned down jobs at famous companies where they probably would have become very senior managers. The reason is because they wanted to do more. They believed so much in their vision and believe the opportunity of their vision is so compelling that they were willing to give up a position an opportunity that millions of others would have gladly taken in order to start something new. Writing a new computer program, creating a new type of phone, reorganizing the web. When they first started, these were just ideas and no one knew whether it would be successful or a failure, but they believed in it. The reality though, is that 
Bill Gates and Mark Zuckerberg are one in a thousand or one in a million. I see and know personally hundreds of other people like them who took a big risk but did not achieve the same level of success. Some people might argue that these people wasted their opportunity and they never should have taken the risk. I also joined a startup in 2000 and we went out of business and failed in 18 months. But all of us, all the people I know, even if they failed, have no regrets and would make the exact same decisions all over again if we had the chance. Why? Because it was exciting. Because it gives you a chance to chase your dreams and gives you the feeling of being excited and wanting to go to work every single day. As I've mentioned over the past few days, even when I was four or five years old, I knew I wanted to be a computer scientist. Even though you work harder than you ever thought possible, the work is energizing and becomes a part of your life, not just something you have to do every day to make money. In a lot of cases, the reason people go to work, their motivation isn't money at all. But the opportunity to change the world or do something that's really, really interesting and unusual. I was lucky because I came to Silicon Valley in 1998 when startups were at their peak. My parents thought I was crazy and wanted me to become an accountant because the world will always need accountants and it's a very safe job with good pay. I'll likely never lose my job or get laid off. This was common across a lot of my Chinese peers, my friends. Their parents wanted them to prioritize careers in engineering, science, or medicine because they were safe and would create a comfortable life. More importantly for the parents, they can tell all their friends, my son's a doctor, my daughter's a lawyer or a PhD. Their parents didn't like that they worked at small companies that no one in China had heard of. They were ashamed when these companies failed and so many of them push their children to avoid risk. To live life by losing or not or avoiding losing instead of living life to win is a very big difference in philosophy and how you make decisions around risk. And when I compare this to a lot of my American friends, they tend to be a lot more competitive and willing to take risks. Their parents told them they would be proud of them no matter what they did and that they should do what they're interested in. A lot of my friends, including myself, played sports and it was a big influence. Teaching them from very young that sometimes you will lose and it's okay, but it's much more fun to win. And so you should try to win at the next chance you get. And you should try to win at life. And if you lose once, work harder, practice harder, so that you can win the next time. But you can't win the next time if you don't try again. So how do you define winning in life? And that's what brings me to the second observation where I see a lot of difference between America and China, and that's the pursuit of passion and interest. Success is defined very differently by everyone, and everyone will chase after what they view as most important. I had one friend at MIT that defined success as wealth and power. She went on to become very successful at Goldman Sachs, and five years after graduation, she proudly showed me her closet full of Armani suits. I had another friend who liked politics. He graduated from Harvard, went to Oxford, 
in Cambridge and never had a real job until he was 35. And then he ran to be the governor of a state in the US. But ultimately he was unsuccessful. He works part time now and invests in stocks to make money. Finally, I have a friend who went to MIT but decided to be an architect. He works 100 hours per week and makes $50,000. But he was a part of the team that designed the Freedom Tower, the buildings that replaced the World Trade Center in New York after September 11th. All of those friends of mine have one thing in common. They're really, really happy with their life. They love what they do. And there's not many changes that they would make to it. And so in America, they would be considered very successful. If you were the parents of any of these examples, would you be proud? Or would you try to convince them to change their life path? Most American parents, including myself, would be happy if my children were any of these. Why? Because these people truly love what they do and they have their own definition of success and they believe that they're successful. When I talk about the future with my kids, I tell them, I don't care what you do. It can be any career as long as you like it, but you have to really, really love it and you have to really, really be good at it. Because to me, that's the best definition of career success. My view, and because I grew up in America, is that as long as you're doing something you love, who cares what other people think? This may cause traditional Chinese parents to disagree with me. My own grandparents did. My grandfather, until the day he died, kept trying to convince me to get a PhD because he felt that it was the only way to be successful in life and that to measure success, it's how much education you had. When I started at McKinsey, none of my parents' friends had heard of McKinsey, but they loved to talk about their kids who worked at Microsoft or Oracle, more famous companies. But that's okay for me. So in conclusion, the purpose of this discussion is to encourage discussion on these different viewpoints. There is no right or wrong answer. Just as there's generally no right or wrong answer in life, just different opinions and everybody lives their own life. I would encourage students as they pick their activities, their majors, their projects to think about what success means to them in life. And this will probably change as you grow up. It did for me. And I encourage parents to think about what really matters to them, their view of, su of success compared to their children's view of success. For me personally, a lot of people ask why I'm working with EduBridge with my background. Well, the simple answer is I happen to like it. I've done most of what I've been interested in, in my career. I've worked at McKinsey, one of the best consulting firms in the world. I've given advice to the CEOs of HP, Oracle. I've worked in top high tech companies and been a senior vice president with hundreds of people on my team. And I really enjoyed each of these jobs. Now I happen to really enjoy helping kids with college. Just as I enjoyed interviewing students for MIT. I didn't get paid for it, but I enjoyed doing it. And even with EduBridge, could I make more money or become more famous or powerful doing something else? Of course, maybe in a few years, maybe I'll do something different. But right now, I really enjoy what I do I'm happy to be talking to all of you and happy to be working with incredibly bright and talented kids to help them realize their college dreams. I wish I had that opportunity when I was younger. 
to have advice and help rather than find the path myself. Because it's a lot harder and you have to work a lot harder and put in more effort to do that. And so with that, I want to thank you for listening to our series of talks over the past two weeks. I'm happy to answer any questions. Okay, it looks like there's uh, no more questions for today. So once again, I want to thank you for listening and hope you got value out of our talks and have a great evening. Thanks very much, everybody.